Hello everyone, this is Preset Pack version 7. I know it's been a while, but we made some refinements and we added some new stuff in here. All right, to start it off, we're gonna use our type tool. And then let's go ahead and start typing nothing because guess what, we have these presets. We're gonna drag over Alex and I can twirl this up, delete that text, and now we can type whatever we want in the Alex Hermosi font. So what is the next one? We have Alex Hermosi number two, and this is just in a bigger font size. So this was popular in 2023, 2022. Next we have Linus Tech Tips. So we have Linus's text on here as well. We have Ludwig, go ahead and drag that on there. There's his. Then we have MKBHD, Marquez Brownlee. And then lastly, we have, of course, Mr. Beast. So all of these are also included with your purchase if you decide to get the preset pack. You just have to download these fonts. So next is Reverse Stretch Out. So these are inspired by Finzar. So we're gonna go ahead and use the Mr. Beast font for this. I'll type in Fin. And this is included in our Alex Hermosi video. This is a free preset pack that Finzar includes. So I just added, he does the end point, so where it starts, and I added the out point, so when it ends. So here we go. So for pop in, this text is now going to pop in. There it is. And then at the end, Let's say I make a cut right here and our text layer ends there. At the end, I have it anchoring on the out point. So we'll do pop out and guess what? How it popped in, it's popping out. Nice, all right? So those are kind of the same things, except now we have the beginning and end. So I wanted to add those. So there they are. So we've got all those. Next is slide up and down. So if we go over to our Mr. Beast, we'll go ahead and use that for the remainder of these presets. So we have slide up slide up in, and then we have slide up out. So the in point and the out point. So here it comes in, there it goes out, same thing. And next we have slide down in, slide down out. So in the beginning it's sliding down and also exiting out. Next on the list we have slide left, slide left in, slide left out. I think you guys are getting the idea. Next we have slide right, slide right out. Okay, next one, there it is. Moving along, and we have bouncing advertisement, which I think you can imagine that this text is now gonna start bouncing, like an advertisement. There you go. Next one, we have double dribble. So this is similar. You can use these on text layers, emojis, video layers, doesn't matter, but the motion is going to be there. So it just starts at the very beginning. Most of these are anchored on the beginning or the end point. So there you go, kind of dribbles out. And then same thing, except this one's a little bit smoother. It takes a little bit longer. There you go. Now we have quick zoom. These are the ones that have been refined. So let's go ahead and take a look at these with a video clip of myself. So we'll start with quick zoom. So this is half a second. And then on the preset itself, I'm saying here's the time and here's also what's happening. So it's scaling from 100 to 110. So that is what all of these numbers mean. So here we go. It's nice quick stuff. Then we have quick zoom out. Here we go. And then zoom in out, real subtle. Then we have zoom in one second. Let's go ahead and go to the next one. Nice and smooth. Then we have zoom out, same thing. All these are, on, are anchoring on the end point. So it's now zooming out. Nice and smooth. Next we have subtle zoom in. Nice and subtle stuff going from 100 to 105. And then we have the inverse, so we have zoom out. So everything is anchored on the endpoint. So it's zooming out, nice and subtle for those two seconds. And then we have another variation for three seconds. So this one is even more subtle, but now we're going a little bit further. So it's 100 to 110 for the scale. Nice and smooth, it comes to a stop like that. And then we have the other way, zooming out, same thing, 110 to 100. And there we go. Next we have zoom out bounce. So this one's a little crazy, but I'll do this on this video layer just so it's bouncing and then it comes to a stop. And next is blur and darken. This is really popular if you're doing like cross dissolves and then you put text on screen or in some of my tutorials, I'll use this if I'm kind of layering something out or moving it. It just makes it really fast of like, oh, I need to blur and darken this. So that's what it's doing. Next, we have a drop shadow. I'm gonna bring up an emoji, but this works on anything and I use it all the time for everything. <laughs> so any asset that I'm putting on screen, I'll just put a drop shadow behind it with this and it's just two of them combined with some distance. And I put this on everything. You can go on text layers, videos, or just individual assets that are on a screen. 
So I have a black version of that. I have a white version of that. And then I have a soft white just for a different look because white can look weird on some backgrounds. And then next I have fast emoji spinning. So if we put it on emoji, guess what? It's gonna start spinning. That one's really, really fast. Next one is really, really slow. It's a lot slower. And then you can also change this by messing with the shutter angle. So if I did something like 360, it's really, really blurry, but that might smooth it out. Okay, next one is loosey goosey. This is kind of like a flag. So you just put it on a layer. You see it kind of like a flagpole. Next is the rainbow effect. So the setup for this one is that you have to go to your text layer and turn it red. Now, if you do have a Mac, this might not be available to you because this specific effect is in the obsolete section in your effects panel. So you might have to get on with Adobe to find that or they might reload it for you. But if you are a PC user, you'll just have this because what we're using is HLS. So if we go ahead and go to rainbow effect, bada boom. Now we're getting this rainbow effect. And then you can move those keyframes if you need it. But that is what is being used is color balance HLS. Okay. So these are really popular in 2023 were the animated emojis. And we went ahead and cut those out for our students. But this just removes the green screen. So I'll just drag it on here. And guess what? The green screen is gone. All right. So that is just using the ultra key. And then it's already pre-made to that specific color of green. So it just removes it automatically. Next is left, tilt right, tilt left. This was pretty popular as well. So if I have a text layer, I can just tilt it left. And then again, I can just tilt it right. And what this was helpful for was for that Hermosi look. So if I had a bunch of text layers, I could do it all at once with these presets. Next is smooth pan with images. So this is taken from Ali Abdal. You might've seen our video on him. But if I have a screenshot, a picture of myself, I can just drag this on here. And it's very similar to the motion that all these videos were doing. So when he had an image on screen, it would have this movement. Pretty cool. Next one is stop motion. I put the note that you could use it for text layers, but you can put it on pretty much anything. So if I go to this text layer with Mr. Beast, I'll go ahead and drag it on there. And I'm going to drag this in and out point and render it so you can actually see what's happening. All right, so you see that subtle effect, very popular with stop motion type collage type videos and it gives some texture to either an image or in this case, a text layer. Next is the text glow effect. So this one's subtle. It's just a different technique that I've used before if I don't want to go inside of After Effects. So I'll go ahead and drag this onto our text layer and you'll see that it just blurs it. So I'll go up here to our text layer and do Control C, Control V, and then I'll just drag this up so it's in between and now it looks like it's glowing. So that's what I do there, okay? Next is text pop. So this is from Justin S. Pejo. This was in his earlier reels and I was just inspired by it. So I just added it to this. So if we go, it is anchored to the endpoint at the beginning, we'll see it scale up. See, kind of just pops in. And then you can also mop modify this with the shutter angle, do whatever you want if you want to add some blur to it. But there you go. So the next one is turbulent text. This was inspired by another short form content creator, Frederick, and I'll go ahead and render it. So now you see it has kind of this warbly, watery, turbulent effect on the text. You can also put this on images as well. Next is the animated highlighter. So this one requires a setup as well. What I would do in this case is grab your rectangle tool and then make sure that you're clicked off of the layer so it makes its own layer. So I would then just make a rectangle and we're not actually gonna see this shape. We're gonna hide it inside of our effects controls. And then I'll just drag it on here and it's gonna make its own shape layer. So let's go ahead and find that shape layer. There it is. So it's like it's highlighting, but obviously we wanna see the text. So I can resize it uh, and move it around wherever I need it. So say that I want it to highlight over this text layer. Now the blend mode, we just change the blend mode to color. And now it's like it's highlighting over that text layer. All right. Next is reveal text karaoke style. So this is a very cheap way to do it. It's just using the crop tool and it anchors on the endpoint as well. So let's say that we want to reveal this text layer. We're just going to drag it on there and it is now being revealed. So if you had a bunch of text layers, you can line these up and then drop this effect on all of them. So it's like they're all being revealed. Next one is hover bounce. So you might get an idea of what this is going to do, but I'll go ahead and render it real fast. So this is a subtle effect. It's almost like it's hovering, but it's more of kind of just bouncing in place. Okay. 
Next is color halftone. So this is just something that I was playing with one day. I put comic to make it look like you're in a comic strip. So let's go ahead and drag that onto our video layer. And it's like, I'm in a comic book, right? And then you can play with this in terms of what is being shown on screen. You can either take out the extract, you can move it around, but I used a grid to kind of get those dots. So if I take off extract, you'll see that we just have these dots for texture. All right, so that's that option. Next is smooth float. I'm gonna bring up our emoji example again. And then with this, I put big infinity path and I'll show you what I mean by that. So if we go ahead and play it, you see that it's kind of moving almost in like a figure eight because that's what I made it for. So if we hit the position, we can see a little figure eight and how the emoji is going to cycle through that. So this is the bigger path. And then next we have a smaller path. So if I go ahead and delete that, do G2. Now we have a smaller path. So it's like it's hovering around, but it's very subtle. Because if we look at it, the figure eight is very, very small. All right. So that is the smooth float. Next is Tom Nosk text flicker. I'm going to use this text preset, put on Mr. Beast text, and then you'll see it flicker in just like that. Re really subtle stuff, but you can kind of compound this with some sound design to kind of sell it of what's happening. So G4 through G9 is all of the new stuff. These first two are my favorites, the ultra smooth zoom in and out. I'll go ahead and give you a taste of that. Let's do this one. Let's do zooming in. Has a little bit of blur as it comes in. Very, very smooth stop. So I like using this on long form and short form. Let's go ahead and see G5. So zoom out, same treatment, doing the same thing. We're going from 140 to 100 on both of these examples. So it's going 100 to 140. And this one zooming out 140 to 100. There it is. Pretty nice, right? Next we have the CRT screen. So this is like you're on TV. So if I wanted to modify the lens distortion, I could do that and kind of scale it up. And then I can move around the parameters to kind of sell that I'm on a TV screen, right? Looks pretty funny, but there you go. So that is the CRT screen. Next is a VHS look. And then it looks like I'm on an old school VHS. And then I'll also compound it with this VHS shake. So this is primarily on the video position parameter. So up here, you'll see it change, but we'll drag it on to our layer. And now we have all these keyframes of it shaking. So I'm going to render it out real fast. And there it is. It looks like we're shooting on an old VHS tape. It's bouncing around. It's got that color, kind of a really deep contrast with the greens kind of pushed up. But there you go. And last but not least is the grid background. This is such a great tool that we made a walkthrough for free, but we added it to our paid one because it's really hard not to use this thing. So we have a color mat on our timeline. This is at 45, 45, 45 is the color code for this gray color. And then we're just gonna click and drag. And guess what? We got a background just like that. There's a bunch of options in here, but again, check the link in the description to watch that video to utilize this to its full potential. But that is it for version seven of the preset pack. If you want to support the channel, this is an easy way to do that because these are tools that I use every single day inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. So thank you guys for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one.